Welcome back to this is the live the Sunday talk show here on the Arise News channel. Now we go to our second topic of the day. Nigeria's Supreme Court this past Thursday ordered governors of the country's 36 states to henceforth stay clear of funds meant for the administration of the 774 local governments in the country. At the moment, the state governments receive and control funds meant for the local councils, and when they deem fit, they constitute caretaker committees to run the affairs of the 30 hour government. In a landmark judgment delivered by a seven member panel of justices, headed by Justice Emmanuel uh, Alawa Gabwa, Nigeria's Supreme Court ruled that the control of funds of the local government councils by the states is unconstitutional. The case of our local government autonomy was brought before the Supreme Court by Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice in a move to ensure full independence of the local government councils under Section 162, so 4, 5, and 6 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That constitution does not uh, provide or does provide for a joint account for states and local government councils. Well, it provides. We are excited that finally freedom has come to the people of Nigeria. Freedom has come to the people. The democracy can now be entrenched in all the 704 local governments in Nigeria. Our people can now see rapid development. So we just want to thank God Almighty for giving us a president like Bola Tinibu, who has had the courage to take this step. In the meantime, President Bola Tinibu this week announced the creation of a new Ministry of Livestock Development. This is as part of what his administration officials said was a broad effort to address the recurring clashes between herders and farmers around the country. These conflicts have, more often than not, led to violence and instability. Mogaji Buyega Adijumo is a member of the Eminent Elders Forum, a one-time national publicity secretary of Pan-Yoruba Social Political and Cultural Organization, Aferenferi and a former publicity secretary of Yoruba Summit Group. He joins me now to look at those two situations that can be very veritable litmus tests for Nigeria's constitutional development. Good to have you on this day live, the Sunday talk show, Mogaji Adejuma. Thank you for joining us. It's good to be back here, Dr. Abachi. Well, uh, Mogaji Adejuma, Afeni Ferry, uh, uh, you know, uh, issued a statement saying that uh, the ruling by the Supreme Court is an assault on the concept of democracy, on federalism, and that it's an attempt by the Tinubu administration to continue with a unitary style system of administration. Now, it's not only uh, a ferry ferry that has complained. The governor of Oyo State, Shei Makinde, says the ruling of the Supreme Court is a distraction. Similarly, the former governor of Delta State, James Sibori, chief on an FA, says that, look, it's a violation of the concept of uh, federalism. But there are others who have praised the ruling by the Supreme Court on Section 7, which is the, uh, uh, the uh, fact that uh, there should be no caretaker committees, that local councils should be democratically elected. Uh, and also on uh, Section 162, saying that, look, governors have abused Section 162 on joint local government and state accounts, and therefore, state go uh, local governments should get their money directly. Uh, Waziri Adamawa Atiku Abubaka has praised the ruling. Uh, many lawyers have praised the ruling. Mr. Peter B says it is in order. Arewa Think Tank says it's in order. Mr. Femi Falano says it's in order. Uh, Michael Zekome, SAN says the ruling is in order. Well, Latif Agwemi, Attorney General of the Federation, says it's a major triumph uh, uh, for democracy. But there are people like Afeni Ferry and the others that I've listed who say that no, this ruling takes us back. What do you think? Mogadji Adijuma. Going by the principle, the very principle upon which uh, 
true federalism uh, is to be designated, described, and perhaps even propagated. It is an aberration. The principle that establishes true federalism will talk about what and what have come together to form a federation. And Nigeria cannot be different. In any federation, it is about the component states or regions that have come together to say we want to form a federation. Going by that definition, true federalism will only have to be observed in totality, and every other thing will have to be added onto it. Nobody is saying that um, maybe there is a lot of corruption or the governors are abusing their uh, powers by perhaps even sitting on local government funds. But my local government of Ibadan Northwest did not federate for Nigeria. When Nigeria was going to become a federation, that was actually the aftermath of the 1953 constitution in London that bought the first true federal constitution in Nigeria in 1954, the Littleton Constitution. It was the regions, three of them, that formed the basis of our Federal Republic of Nigeria, the northern region, the eastern region, and the western region. But we would always have the need to have administrative uh, uh, tiers to help with easing of um, having to run governance to make sure that it gets to the grassroots. We always have the representatives of the grassroots too coming to be part of the whole system of having the state as well as the federal being run according to the law. But when you now have in a true federal state of the federating units coming together, forming a federal government and the state government by mutual consent or thereabout. You can only have the states creating such uh, uh, administrative units. So even the constitution that we find so defective, the 1999 constitution, has given the states the powers to create local governments. The power to create local government does not lie with the federal government. It can never lie with the federal government. Because no federated state will have to consult any local government before it takes a decision at the center. They are only appendages of the state. And which brings to fall, what are the best international practices? If you go to the United States of America, where we largely borrowed from, the constitution of the federal uh, of, of the United States actually says that the federal states are 50 that came together. Of course, they were not originally 50, they were four. Uh, and then Texas came and then they became seven, then Texas left and then they became 14 and then they became 25. In all of which they did to achieve 50, there was no county, no county, which of course we can equate with the local government, in the mix. And who can determine the number of counties is the state. Who pays the country? Nobody. In the United States of America, they generate their own funds. In true federalism, no federal government should be paying anyone. We experienced such a thing in the, in the First Republic. The very first set of uh, uh, founding fathers that we had, they got it right. Every region was generating what it would need to be able to govern itself and still remit a, 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 some uh, agreed sum to the center. And that is what a federation is. I think it is right to say that there is a semblance of unitary system in this. Because it's only a unitary system that you have a federal government being a, 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 an all powerful tier of government that will have to pay X, that will have to pay Y. When we are talking about devolution of powers, we are not talking about power just flowing from the center. We are talking about the power that belongs to the people of the federating unit, being able to determine how they want to be ruled. Of course, every state, every region, they have their own culture. They have their own religion. They have their own uh, 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 tenets. They have everything that they want to use 
uh, to be able to remain the, the, the people that they are in dignity. So there will always have to be that recourse to true federalism, and that is what we've been preaching for. Not for the almighty federal government to be paying local government. That is an aberration in true well, federalism, well, and that well, is the truth. Well, Morgan, every other well, thing well, we well, can, well, every well, other well, thing we can well, amass. Morgan, yes. The job of the uh, of the yes, is please. to interpret the law. Now, what uh, in the legal judgment that Justice Emmanuel Agim try to do is to say section 162 of the 1999 constitution sub 4 sub 5 sub 6 does not intend that governors should steal money misappropriate mismanage money belonging to local councils and to the extent that that has not worked federal government should pay directly to the local councils the level of government that is closest to the people are you saying that these uh, thieving governors who steal other people's money, uh, that we should leave the situation like that? Because uh, there, there is an anomaly with the operationalization of the law that the, uh, the Supreme Court tried to correct. The uh, truth of the matter is that we live in a country where everybody is strangulated. The state governors will have something to say about the fact that there's an exclusive list that gives the federal government all the powers, and they are just having this residual that will amount to nothing. It, look, we're talking about corruption. Corruption is an endemic thing that permeates everywhere. Just last week, we saw a former minister being brought to court, but then it's a daily occurrence. It's not an happenstance. It's not even an happenstance that any of those they, br they, they bring from maybe the, 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 the previous administration or even the one before will faint in court. And when you look at the amount of money, the homongous amount of money is always going to run into billions of naira. We are having to deal with an endemic situation. But then how do we deal with it? We should always be very clear to ourselves. We have a problem of corruption as different from a problem of having to go with the tenets of true federalism. When we get to having to define what is true federalism, then we'll see a lot of corruption even in what the federal government has been doing for so long that negates even the principles of true federalism. How come, and I'm going to give an example, in this Lagos, there's a local government called Papa Local Government that has um, Roro, uh, that has a Tink Island, Island port, that has their papa port, that generates up to 67% of non-oil revenue for the whole of the Federation. But then what happens to what we should call derivation? What happens to the idea that a Lagos state that has all of that going for it, and even a VAT that is about 70%, does not get what it deserves, simply because we run a near unitary system of governance. That alone is corruption. That is corrupt. It's not just about stealing, just like somebody said and it was misinterpreted. It's not about what is going on with somebody that's being brought to court that embezzlement that is corruption. That is corruption that is in pimbendalism, in nepotism. There's corruption in not following the tenets upon which our founding fathers agreed to come together. When we, when we have a clear case of a governor that has misappropriated the funds, then what do we do? Then we should let the, the law take its course. But then, of course, there was a rebadu at a time that gave us a list of all the governors that have stole, stolen money, and he did it in such a way that all of us were gasping we were trying to find out how could these governors have done this. It's not so much about local government funds. It's about the fact that some of them even were taking money directly, directly, and then posting it into their own accounts. That is what Rubadu said. But what has happened to those governors? Are they not back in government? Well, Mar All the governors that Rubadu mentioned, where are Mar they? Mar 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 so, 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 if you want to, excuse me, my brother, sir. If you want to treat corruption, let's treat corruption. But if we want to follow the tenets of having come together to federate as a unit, let's talk about true federation. Let's talk about true federalism. Let's talk about what it is that the federal is taking from the states. Now, the same constitution you are talking about gives the land 
to the, to the states. Where is that portion of the constitution that says the federal government owns the land? No. The state owns the land. No. What and is, then what, what happens? You no. find the government surreptitiously trying to take the land away from the state. No, no. What the Land Use Act says is that the state, section one thereof of Land Use Act uh, 1970, is that the state governments owed land in trustee. The land still belongs to the people as the original exactly. owners. The state government is exactly. just a, is just a trustee. Exactly. That's trustee. Uh -huh. Yes. That's what the law says. But, exactly. But more than that, you want. Let me ask you. So, so does the, that give the federal government the right to take the land away from the, from the states? Where the, the federal government has not tried to take the land away. But I wanted to ask you. If, uh, well, we will, we will, we will, I think we will, get to, we will get to that when we start to examine perhaps the philosophy that is behind this um, creation of um, Ministry of Livestock. Maybe we'll get to that. We'll okay, maybe we'll you are about land. Uh, yeah, we'll maybe, be able to talk about... You, you can go ahead. Talk about it. Talk about it. Yes, I'm going to just mention the fact that we have had situations in the past where federal government had tried to steal the land, either through having to talk about waterways, either through having to take people's land and turn it into Ruga. I'm from Oyo State. And I'm a stakeholder in the place that we got to know that there was going to be an idea of taking so much land between Dia Ure and, and uh, go away in, 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 in Ogo State and turning it into Ruga. And even the governor then was appalled by whatever the federal government at that time was trying to do. The point is, we have institutionalized corruption. And we cannot just take one aspect of it to mean the whole. We will talk about corruption and how to go about it when we are ready. But when we need to talk about federalism, making sure that we do not put too much into the hands of the federal government to the extent that we will be conditioned to take whatever they give to us, then let us fulfill all that it takes to maintain a federal system. Okay, and I'll go ahead to say this. If, this if, if the Constitution gives the right to create local governments to the states, then why then should it be the federal government that is going to pay the local governments that are being created by the states? Okay, Mark that, is, that, is, that is a germane question that negates even this idea of the federal government paying the local government. Mark Aji, but do you agree that the local councils should be democratically elected? Governors should not establish caretaker committees because that's part of uh, Absolutely. what the it, 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 it is something that some of us it is something that some of us have fought against, we've campaigned against, we've written against, we've given interviews to the effect that having to continue with the idea of just nominating people into offices do not work. They have to be elect electorally, and, and, and not only electorally, but to be seen to have gone through the process of having a free and fair election to have taken place in the local government before we have our representatives there. And, and that is what it is, and that is what we, 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 we would push forward. Well, Mogadji, you brought up the issue of the Ministry of Livestock Development that uh, President Tinobu is proposing. But that is supposed to address the problem of farmers' elders clashes, to address the problem of uh, aff affordability and availability of food, food security, simply. And third, there is a food plan by the uh, Tinubu administration, you know, to uh, provide, you know, to import food, to, you know, make it possible for Nigerians to, to have food. You know, I, I, why should you have a problem with that? That has nothing to do with running a unitary government. It is about the welfare of the Nigerian people. I definitely, and perhaps I should just go ahead to say, I shouldn't have a problem with any effort to put food on the table. I shouldn't even have any problem to see the resolution of certain issues. But I would definitely have a problem if what we are treating continues to be this idea of farmers' edas clash. Uh, uh, and that is where some of us will be very disagreeable. If somebody comes into my farm unannounced, uninvited and he decides to ravage uh, and, and steal my produce, 
uh, and, and injure my wife and rape my children, that is not a clash. That is an act of terror. And if there is an act of terror, it should be addressed as an act of terror. And if we are going to have a whole ministry for livestock, then what about poultry? What about piggery? What about every other thing that is supposed to be of private concern? Are we not going to be able to defend that as well? But what we know is this. There had been attempts in the past that have failed to be able to appropriate land to people who are not indigenous to that land under the guise of having to solve farmers' edas clash. Now, we are not very sure yet. So nobody is going to make a categorical statement and make an accusation and say that this is exactly what is going to happen with the livestock uh, uh, ministry. But if it is seemingly going to appear as if it is Ruga in disguise, as if we are going to have by the same guys of the federal government paying directly into the accounts of the local government and taking certain responsibility of the states to be able to approach the local government directly to ask for land, then of course there is a nexus. And through that nexus, we'll be able to determine how exactly we should face this, this issue. And it is a suspicious issue because no sooner after the announcement was made, the usual suspect, they went to town to celebrate and to say that, oh, this is exactly what we've been asking for. The same had us that are very much the source of all the problems that we have with food insecurity because they would destroy our farms and, and other insecurity because they kill our people uh, and, and all of these things are commonplace. Nobody is making it up. The reports are there every day. If they are the one to rejoice over the establishment of uh, the livestock uh, ministry, then all, some of us or all of us should be alive to our responsibilities to interrogate and to begin to really uh, begin to search, put our surveillance or, uh, cap on and see what exactly is coming out of this livestock thing. And maybe I should just add, in the idea of having to go by the best practices, why can't we have the train, the railway as a transport system to simply uh, deliver the cattle from point A to point B? We have countries all over the world who have been able to uh, address food insecurity and every other thing through technology. Why are we resorting to having to solve our problem using the Abraham and Lot approach of 4,000 years ago? Why must it have to be about somebody wanting to take my land? Why must it have to be somebody who is talking, uh, uh, who wants to take my indigenous land? Why, why, why do we still at this time of our development, 64 years after, 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 after uh, 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 independence, still talk about how to transport cattle. If, if the only thing we need is to get cattle from point A to point B, should that be a problem? Should that be what we will have to take somebody's land to? The idea of even having to say, we are creating a livestock ministry simply to solve this problem sounds very, very suspicious. Well, Mogaji. Uh, uh, and that is what we have to say Mogaji Adejumo, the Minister yes. of Agriculture, Abubakar Hiari, I said that, look, the National Economic Council and the Food uh, Systems uh, Initiative uh, Unit put together by President Tinubu would, within the next two weeks, put together the details. So do you think that, you know, it, it looks like maybe Nigerians are jumping the gun by criticizing details that have not yet been made public? Should we not be patient? and wait for government to give us the fuller details of what they intend to do with food security and the livestock ministry. Exactly what I tried to say that until we begin to put the such light on and then do the necessary uh, surveillance and interrogate the whole idea and the concept behind it, then of course we are only going to be talking about what could be the danger in having to go through what appears to be uh, the most visible 
uh, aspects of it. The most visible aspect of it even being enhanced by the, uh, the, the way some people are shouting for joy, be, be, the way the Mieti Allah already going to town to say, oh, this is exactly what we've been asking for. And then, of course, the na next natural question, what exactly have they been asking for? So this is, this is exactly what I said, that we will have to wait. But whilst we are waiting, then we have to put our thinking caps on and we have to be alert. We have to be alive to our responsibilities so that when it shows, when uh, everything that we are suspecting begins to manifest, then of course uh, we will have to do something about it. Well, but to sound the, the, the warning ahead of what could be is the only thing we can do for now. But beyond that, uh, everything will have to unfold. Well, thank you very much, uh, Moga Jigwega Dejumo, uh, member of Eminent Elders Forum, uh, for joining us on this day live, uh, the Sunday talk show. We'll see how this uh, story uh, pans out. Thank you very much indeed.